Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. This is our third video in our series, Church Under Attack. This video is entitled, Beguiled by Science. As I've said from our very first video, that from the time of Jesus, the inception of the church, we have been under constant attack by our enemies. They have stomped and stomped, but stomp as they may, they have not, will not, and shall not overcome the church because according to Jesus' own words the gates of hell shall not prevail Matthew chapter 16 verse 18 in this video we will deal with how some theologians have changed um, our theology or doctrine to agree with science as if atheistic science was the benchmark that we have to meet in other words, they force scripture to validate atheist science rather than atheist science validating scripture. As if God could not communicate what he actually meant when he told us what happened in the beginning. So he might just need a little bit of help in remembering what actually took place by our brilliant scientists who actually hate him. What am I referring to in specific? Well, I'm talking about something called the gap theory, also known as the ruin restoration creationism, which contradicts Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, which says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. The gap theorists thought that the earth, or they think that the earth, is millions, even billions of years old. They, they try to make our theology agree with atheistic science. Here's what they say. They say that the six-day creationist us who believe that the world and everything that, that we know, the heavens, the earth, and everything in it was created in six literal days. And on the seventh day, God rested. But they say that we don't have it entirely right. We have it wrong. Now, please keep in mind that God himself said in Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all the work which God created and made. So, if the earth is billions of years old, then how could God rest on the seventh day? That's a question that really needs to be answered. Would it not be like four million and seventh day? Or five million and seventh day? Not just seventh day. But because atheist science contradicts six days of creation, therefore a young earth, um, as compared to, to the billions of years Theologians try to, to force a square peg into a round hole. Because obviously, atheistic science knows best. And God could not communicate what he actually did and what actually happened in the six days explanation that he gave about his creation in Genesis chapter 1. Here's what they also say. They say that in Genesis chapter 1, Verse 1, the creation was created and perfectly. Everything that was created was created perfectly. But in Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, they find that a destruction had taken place and the earth was now found, found to be form, formless and void or without form and void. So they claim that evolutionist has it right. The Atheist science is correct, and millions, even billions of years, have now transpired. However, they, they acknowledge that 
chronological history in the Bible only starts approximately 10,000 years ago. How convenient. The history starts only 10,000 years ago, but there's billions of years of history before that. But nothing, nothing at all is recorded about it in, in, the, in Scripture except for that one section there that they try to force something that doesn't actually fit. So that's why they claim that the six-day creationists don't have it exactly right because we believe in six literal days of creation. But if they weren't so blinded by atheist science, they would understand that there were no destruction just because the verse says that the earth was without form and void. We go into more detail in our creation videos. So if you want to check that out, we'll put a link below so that you just click on the link and I'll take you there. But all that verse there is saying is that earth was empty. It had nothing in it because it, none of the inhabitants was created as yet. No man, no vegetation, no nothing. Nothing was created. Therefore, it was empty. It was without inhabitants. Otherwise, it would be saying that the earth somehow got bent out of shape because of some destruction that was supposedly had taken place between Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, which is totally absurd. And the scriptures does not even hint at such an interpretation, except that atheist science says that the earth is millions and or billions of years old. So let us fully understand this. The earth has hundreds of millions, possibly billions of years of history, but the scripture says absolutely nothing about it. Nothing at all. And they don't find that just a little bit strange? Well, I have some moon landing rocks that I would like to sell them at a really good price. So this, this theologian, he, he, he further explains that carbon dating is not exactly accurate, but it's not a fool's errand either because Earth is older than 10,000 years. And so, yes, because God, God couldn't actually communicate what he actually meant by in six days, all the earth and everything in it was created, and on the seventh day, he rested, right? In order for evolution to work, they must, and I repeat, they must have billions of years. Therefore, if the earth is only 6,000 years old, or even 10,000 years old, then evolution has no argument. So it's forced upon us by programming us and programming our children with misinformation from the time that school begins in the first grade or even in kindergarten. It's forced upon us. It's no longer the theory of evolution. It's the fact of evolution when not one shred of evidence have ever been discovered. The problem here is that with, with, with evolution and, and, and this gradual um, move to, to, to complex organisms is that the geological record should, should prove that. But yet it does not support evolution at all. The fossil record should show the gradual increase in complexity of the creature fossil. But the reality is there are complex creatures at the top, at the bottom, and in between. They're all complex creatures. Peter said that they were willingly ignorant of the facts. Look at 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 5 through 7. For they deliberately overlooked this fact that the heavens existed long ago and earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God, that by means of these the world and then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word 
the heavens and earth and now exist are, restore, are stored up for fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. In other words, they chose not to believe. They deliberately made themselves ignorant of the fact that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth out of water and through water. They, they deliberately ignore the fact that God said that everything was created in seven days. And in seven days he created, or in six days he created the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested. They ignore the fact that the earth was destroyed by a great flood and that judgment is now awaiting the ungodly. They chose not to believe any of that. It says nothing about a pre-destruction. The only destruction Peter mentions is that of the flood. Matthew chapter 19 verse 4 says, and he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? This is Jesus himself explaining that God created everything in the beginning. He said that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female. Jesus is explaining that in the beginning God created them male and female. He created Adam and Eve. If there was a four billion year gap or more or less, wouldn't, wouldn't Jesus not have mentioned that at, at the time? I mean, by all reasonable arguments, it's no way that Jesus could say that Adam and Eve were created in the beginning if you have this long gap of four billion years. That's not the beginning. If that is not clear enough, if, if you want to have it a little bit more clear, look at what Jesus said in, in Mark chapter 10, verse 6. From the beginning of, of the creation, God made them male and female. Again, Jesus states that Adam and Eve were both created at the beginning of creation, not four billion years after creation. The other error they make is saying that Satan and the angels had a war, and because of that rebellion, or because of that sin, the world was destroyed, leaving it formless and void. But Paul contradicts that teaching outright. Paul said in Romans chapter 5 verse 12 through 14, Therefore, just as sin came into the world, world through one man and death through sin, so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. Paul is saying that sin entered the world through one man, namely Adam. Then from there it spread to all of his offspring, causing all now to sin because of the inherited sin nature that we inherited from Adam. Then he puts a time stamp on it. He said, death because of sin reigned from Adam, then started or or, or it, it was from the start or the beginning with Adam to Moses, the giver of the law. Then he explains that the law was given to convict people of their sin. But he alluded to Adam being in the beginning. Even though they say that it, it has been proven that the earth is billions of years old, the truth is, there is not one shred of evidence to prove that the earth is billions of years old. It's only their theory that the earth is billions of years old. Because there is no way to prove a lie true. 
Then they come back around from the other side with the day-age theory. What that simply means is that they state that the first day and the second day and the third day and so on were not actually 24-hour periods, but long periods of time, possibly hundreds of billions of years or, or hundreds of millions of years, even billions of years. But the scripture is clear on that as well. It says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 5, God called the light day, and the darkness he called the night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Can it be any clearer? It is plain as day and night right there. There you have it. There is no need for further explanation. It says that there was evening and there was morning the first day. And again, he says, there was evening and there was morning the second day. And he goes on all through the days saying there was evening and there was morning the, f the first, second, third, fourth, and so on days. It's not billions of years but it's a 24 hour period that that scripture is describing right there. So in summary, the doctrinal teaching of the Christian church has been corrupted in a way in order to harmonize or to be in harmony with atheist science. The gap theory has found its way into the church which states that there's a huge huge gap between Genesis chapter 1 and um, verse 1 and Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. Then God had to start all over again in verse 3 which is a contradiction to, to scripture. It, there, there's not two starts. There's not two beginnings. It's either the beginning or it's not the beginning. But the problem is it's, it's, it puts death and corruption before the fall of Adam. When God said that all the way through the, the seven days, uh, he said that everything was good. So how can it be considered good if it has been corrupted? As, as they suggest in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus puts Adam... Jesus himself put Adam at the beginning. Paul in Romans does so as well. Paul puts Adam at the very beginning. When he said that sin entered the world through one man, Adam. Not through Satan and his angels. Sin didn't enter through there. God said, and Paul said, that sin entered through Adam. And God himself said that he created everything in six literal days. And on the seventh day, he rested. As we learned, when Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 says that the earth was formless and void, it does not mean destroyed. It simply means that it was unfinished. It was empty. It had no inhabitants. It had no plants, it had no animals, it had no people in it as yet. Because God had not created anything in it as yet. He had created the heaven and everything in it, all the angels and everything in heaven he had created. But the earth, he would take his time because it was the pinnacle of his creation. So don't be fooled by atheist science. Atheist science can never successfully contradict the Bible. We also learn that six days of creation are six literal days, six 24-hour periods, and not billions of years counted as one day. It was the first day, the second day, the third day, and so on. Thank you so much for joining us in this third video in our series, Church Under Attack. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.